My name is Sophie. I've been a housewife for three years now, married. My husband Tim works for a top-tier company as a businessman, and we live on the 20th floor of a high-rise apartment. The night view from our living room is incredibly beautiful, but being raised in the countryside, I initially wanted in a lower-floor apartment when we first got married. However, I agreed to accommodate my husband's wish to live in a high-rise. We both belonged to the same tennis club in college. Tim, two years my senior, was a leader, whereas I joined somewhat casually and was a rather inconspicuous member. Back then, Tim had a girlfriend, so we weren't that close during college. But, a couple of years after I graduated and started working at a law firm, I ran into Tim by chance at a bar. Feeling nostalgic, we chatted about old times and exchanged contact information. Both of us were single at the time, so we gradually began to date. Tim was as sociable as ever with a wealth of topics, and I often found myself listening to his stories. Working at a top-tier company, Tim faced a lot of stress, so dating me seemed to be a source of encouragement for him. After dating for about a year and a half, Tim proposed to me. I had just started my third year at the law firm and acquired my paralegal certification, and I wanted to continue working even after marriage, but I earn enough for us to live comfortably. I want you, Sophie, to stay at home. He said, so I resigned from my job upon marrying him. I never disliked cooking or housekeeping, even when I lived alone, so I enjoyed my days as a housewife. With no financial worries and living in a high-rise, even my parents and friends envied me. So, I focused on making sure Tim could concentrate on his work, carefully planning meals with balanced nutrition and cleaning diligently every day. Then, one day, as Tim was enjoying his favorite hamburger steak at the dinner table, he cheerfully said, We've been invited to dinner by the couple living on the top floor. Eh? That stunningly handsome and beautiful couple who looks like celebrities? Yeah, exactly. I sometimes see the husband at the gym downstairs. We're the same age, which surprised me. Our high-rise has a community gym on the second floor. I'm not fond of machine workouts and only occasionally go for yoga, but Tim, who loves exercise, goes two or three times a week. Really? That intelligent-looking man with glasses? Yeah. He's an IT company CEO, apparently. Well, living on the top floor, he must be doing well. Then, should we book a fancy restaurant for the dinner? No, we've been invited to their place. Tim explained that he bumped into the couple at the apartment entrance today and got invited. Sophie, they said they'd like you to come too. Is that okay? I've only exchanged brief greetings with them. It's an invitation, so why not? Besides, I'm curious about the top floor. Tim, who can easily socialize with anyone, said. On the other hand, I, being shy, wasn't too keen on the idea. I wondered if it was just a polite gesture from them. But before I knew it, the plan became a reality, and we were visiting them this weekend. I brought some simple homemade dishes, but the couple had a professional chef cook for us. It was my first experience of such a luxury, so I felt overwhelmed. However, Wendy, the wife, was friendly and easy to talk to, and by the end of the meal, I felt as comfortable as with a friend. Excited, we talked about our experience. Even after returning from Wendy's place. I haven't had such a good chat in a long time, it was truly enjoyable. Becoming a housewife meant I didn't get to see my friends as much, so meeting Wendy was a delightful event for me. Maybe you could go for lunch with her sometimes? Wendy doesn't seem to work every day. And having a chef at home, that's just on another level. Wendy worked as a freelance designer, handling wallpaper and curtain designs, and seemed to have her own clientele, working at her own pace. I often work from home, so let's have tea together sometime. She suggested as we were leaving. Yeah, she's as beautiful as a movie star, but so approachable and genuinely nice. I'd be happy to become friends with her. Yeah, she really is beautiful. Probably the most beautiful woman I've ever met. Really? Saying that in front of me? No, no, it's different. Sophie, you're cute, right? It's a different type. 
You don't have to explain so desperately. I know myself well enough. I made a slightly pouting face, but seeing Tim's wry smile, I burst into laughter. Seeing me laugh, Tim joined in. It had been a while since we had such a lively atmosphere, joking around. Maybe it was all thanks to meeting the Wendy couple. But little did I know then, this encounter would lead to an incredible challenge. Since then, Tim and I haven't visited Wendy's place together, but Wendy and I became close enough to frequently meet for lunch or tea. One of my worries was that Tim and I were unable to have children. I was considering fertility treatment but couldn't bring myself to discuss it with Tim. I could openly share these feelings with Wendy, though. Fertility treatment can be tough. Maybe it's okay to leave things to nature for a while? Yeah, maybe. But somehow, I feel like Tim isn't that keen on having children. I see. It's tough, isn't it, the feelings between a couple? In my case, it's the opposite. My husband wants kids, but I'm not so enthusiastic. Really? Yeah. I had a miscarriage before. After that experience, I thought maybe it's okay not to try to get pregnant again. Oh, I'm sorry. That was insensitive of me. No, don't worry about it. It's all in the past now. Seeing Wendy's smiling response, I thought how strong she was. You're right. I should just let nature take its course for a bit. I need to cherish the happiness I have now. Wendy's expression seemed to cloud over for a moment as she looked at my smiling face. Shall we head back? I have a design I need to think about by tomorrow. I nodded to Wendy's always graceful demeanor, wondering if I had just imagined that brief change. But from that day on, every time we met, Wendy seemed to be getting thinner. One day, concerned, I asked her. Wendy, is something troubling you? I might not be able to solve it, but I'm here to listen if you want. Thank you, actually, my husband and I are talking about divorce. What? I was speechless with shock. They had seemed so happy when Tim and I visited their home. What could have happened? Sophie, you're the only one I can talk to. What should I do? Wendy began to speak slowly, tears in her eyes. It seems my husband really wanted children. We've had arguments before, but I never imagined he was having an affair. According to Wendy, her husband was involved with a colleague at work. He had told her he would pay compensation for a divorce. Can you believe it? Before we were married, other men proposed to me too. He worked so hard every day to win me over, and now he wants to leave? What am I supposed to do now? It's shocking. I shouldn't interfere in your marriage, but maybe you should talk to your husband again? While feeling a bit uneasy about Wendy's situation, I chose my words carefully to avoid hurting her. After pouring her heart out to me, she whispered, Things will surely work out. And then Wendy left. That evening at dinner, I opened up to Tim about Wendy and her husband's situation. How is Wendy's husband doing lately? That's the thing, I haven't seen him recently. He hasn't been at the gym for about a week now. Is that so? But he didn't seem like the type to cheat. What are you talking about? It's always the serious, intellectual types that turn out to be the worst. Initially, Tim had praised him for being an IT company CEO, but his sudden change of attitude made me feel uneasy. Within a month, Wendy came to tell me they were getting a divorce. Oh, what should I say? It's okay. I've come to terms with it. For now, I'll be staying here. Alone? Yes. I arranged that as part of the conditions of the divorce. Kind of like a compensation. Seeing Wendy so nonchalant about it scared me. Can people really change this much in such a short time? Still, knowing it wasn't my place to comment on their decision, I continued my friendship with Wendy as before. However, not long after this incident, cracks began to appear in my own marriage with Tim. Tim started coming home later than before and often went out on weekends. He claimed he was working overtime or attending business drinking parties, but sometimes he wouldn't contact me until after midnight, 
and I had to confront him about it. Tim, I understand that work is busy, but isn't it too much lately? What do you mean? What are you trying to say? Is it really just work? What else would it be? Of course, it's work. Then, at least let me know when you'll be late. I prepare meals and everything. Huh. Sometimes, a sudden client dinner comes up. I have more responsibilities at work now. Being a housewife who plays at home, you wouldn't understand. I was half astonished by Tim's selfish reasoning. Wasn't it Tim who wanted me to stay home in the first place? I thought I was making our daily life comfortable for him. Ignoring my opinion, Tim just walked away to his bedroom. We had started sleeping in separate bedrooms a few months ago, per Tim's request. I need proper sleep for work. He had said, but our intimate life had also disappeared, making me suspect he might be seeing someone else. Tired of having negative thoughts at home every day, I considered returning to work. So, I discussed this with Wendy. It's not just me going through this, huh? I haven't confirmed he's cheating, but I'm tired of suspecting him every day. That's why I'm thinking of going back to my old job. That sounds good. I think you should work. Besides, I have a feeling Tim might have found someone else. Wendy's words about someone else stuck in my mind. Maybe, but until I hear it from him, I've decided not to press the issue anymore. Wendy, thanks for listening. I'll try my best to get back into employment. Wendy nodded slowly, giving me her usual graceful smile. The next day, I went to the law firm where I used to work. There, I found out that Georgie, the lawyer I used to work for as a paralegal, had left the firm. Apparently, he had opened a detective agency a year ago. He was the one who taught me various job skills since my first year as a professional. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that it was thanks to him I became a paralegal. Wanting to discuss my future career, I decided to visit his detective agency. Georgie, long time no see. Surprised you came all this way. It's been a while, hasn't it? Since your wedding, so about three years? It's been that long already. You helped me so much. No problem. So, what brings you here today? What happened? As I discussed my intention to return to work, I ended up honestly sharing my marital troubles and suspicions that my husband might have a mistress. Our office is a detective agency quite different from your previous job. How about working here? Really? Yeah, we're actually shorthanded and we're just thinking of hiring someone. We've been quite busy since we started, receiving investigation requests from the law firm I used to work at. Income is more than double what I earned as a lawyer. I can offer you a similar salary to before. Of course, this job isn't always pleasant. There are times when the pay doesn't even add up to $3 an hour. Georgie, you're incredible. But why did you decide to quit being a lawyer? Maybe I wanted to change my life. Georgie said, looking distant as if recalling those days. Then, looking me straight in the eyes, he continued. I think it's important for you to start a new life by investigating Tim and uncovering the truth. Something inside me seemed to overflow at his words. Nodding. I'll pay the investigation fee, please do it. I quickly replied. The next day, I met Wendy at our usual cafe for lunch and told her about my new job. I didn't mention it was a detective agency, just said it was an investigation office opened by my former boss. The pay might be less than $3 an hour for some tasks, but I feel like I can utilize my previous experience. I'll give it my best. That's great. I'm rooting for you. I'm thinking of going on a trip tomorrow for a change of scenery. You've been through a lot, Wendy. Enjoy your trip. Thank you. Wendy responded with an even brighter smile than usual. That was the last day I saw my friend Wendy. A few days later, Georgie called me in to report the investigation results, and I was in disbelief. Tim's mistress was Wendy. Their affair had been going on for over a year. That meant they were already involved when our families had a dinner together. 
I can't believe it. Wendy was so kind, listening to all my troubles. Probably just a fling at first. But Wendy's husband must have noticed. Inviting you over might have been a warning to Tim. I don't know what Wendy told you, but her husband is a serious man, not the type to have affairs. Unbelievable. I was so shocked I couldn't say anything more. There's plenty of evidence. You could get a significant amount of compensation. Tim's on a business trip now, right? Eh? Yes. After managing to reply, something struck me, and I looked at Georgie. He nodded solemnly, placing a photograph in front of me. It showed Tim and Wendy entering a resort hotel together. They were on a trip. Eventually, Tim and I divorced. I didn't ask for compensation, instead, I cited irreconcilable differences as the reason of the divorce. Leaving the house, I started working, renting a room in the building of the detective agency. Tim and Wendy remarried without any remorse. Are you really okay with this? Georgie asked me, but for me, it was all according to plan. However, I never thought I'd witness it with my own eyes. A year later, I unexpectedly ran into my ex-husband, Tim. It's been a while. How's work going? I heard it's like $3 an hour. Well, keep at it. He spoke in a mocking tone, and I replied. After a year, you still know nothing. What do you mean? Why don't you ask Wendy? Tim left with a look of dissatisfaction, but that night, he called me in a frenzy. Did you know about this? Know what? That Wendy is buried in debt. Wendy had always been a big spender. Though she claimed to be a designer, she didn't really make much. I knew. I knew you were involved with her for over a year while still married to me. Oh, and one more thing. While you were dating her, she miscarried a child from another boyfriend. That's a lie, right? You knew everything and still married her because you loved her, right? Good luck with that. Bye. I hung up and immediately blocked Tim's number. You finally put a period in that chapter of your life. You did well. Georgie, who had overheard the conversation, spoke to me gently. I couldn't hold back my tears. It was the first time I cried since the divorce. Georgie, without saying a word, just held me. After that, Georgie and I became the best partners, both in work and personal life. Apparently, he had been in love with me since we first met. Now, I love him very much too. Tim, on the other hand, ended up filing for bankruptcy because he couldn't pay off Wendy's huge debts. He couldn't stay at his company and now works for a delivery service. This isn't what I signed up for. He spends his days dealing with Wendy, who constantly complains. They betrayed people without a second thought, but will they ever realize the consequences of their actions?